What a great word. You know, when, when you understand, in this moment, we need Jesus thinkers. Well, that is the truth. Because your thoughts don't, become your attitudes. If we don't, we're in trouble. Yes. And, and that's what I watch. In, we're in one of those moments that we can become introverted because of the press. Yeah. And not realize the press is intended for squirting. <laughs> The press is intended for those grapes to release what is within them. Yeah. And it, it, it's a part of the nature of the grape. And within us, as children of God, when we're in the press, we either introvert yeah. or we allow the power of the Holy Spirit to squirt. Oh, and when, you, when, when, you, when Jesus says so profoundly and powerfully, in this world you'll have tribulation, be of good cheer cheer which you know and most people who are watching is the effervescence of joy surely yes and and and, and that word effervescence we don't hardly use it's uh, but but literally the way you understand effervescence is it's the bubbles in a coke now maybe none of you've ever done it but as a child we used to take the warmer the hotter the coke the better <laughs> and you begin to shake it up let off your thumb <laughs> and begin to squirt sure. all of a sudden the press the push the, yeah. the squirting began, and you got everybody wet around you, everybody yeah. got whatever, <laughs> and, and that's the, in this world, you'll have pressing, be of good cheer. Yeah. Five of us. Now, notice the last part. I have overcome the world. If you're a Jesus thinker, these are good times. <laughs> wow. You went, process when Jesus came, 400 years of darkness. Absolutely. And out of it, here comes a man who knows God and God in man. And literally when the press comes and the shaking comes, yeah. everything changes. Absolutely Hallelujah. everything. And that's right now. God is saying this is a season for you that are in the kingdom to bring those who are not. Yes. Let them see our good works. Philip, what you showed a few moments ago. I, oh, Jesus. What, what you were showing was the good works of the kingdom of God in that warehouse Absolutely. and in that home. Well, yeah. I was in Haiti, uh, uh, the executive vice president of uh, uh, Hope Mission, Mission, Hope Mission in, in Haiti. He, he, he took me to all these wonderful places, and then he took me to a little house they built. And the lady, she, she looked at him and said, where have you been, Otis? I have missed you. And she said, we have everything you're taking. He says, well, you have to understand now, I'm not here every day. I'm all over the world to helping other people like you. And she yes. was good. Otis, you used to show up at my house every day. <laughs> what I do. And she literally has almost <laughs> built a little ministry in that little village around her. Amazing. Because what God is doing. Yeah. And that's what you do. I, I've been to Moldova with people. I, if you're watching, I'm not talking about what I've seen there. I, I remember one night, in Kiznev, where, where literally 600 people never settled. They were moving the whole night. And I was going, Jesus, this is crazy. <laughs> and, and dust in the air. And when I gave the invitation, almost everyone in the room came to Christ. That's amazing. And uh, thank you, Phil, for what you're doing in the kingdom. Well, I'm sure you'll agree with me and, and you'll understand what I'm going to say. I've got no choice. It's, it's, yes. this, is nothing, this is not a choice that you make. Well, let's, what can we do? Yeah. What can we do? No. What I found is that God throws you through open doors and then he says, yes. and then he closes the door behind you so you can't find the exit and you're stuck in this, oh, yes. this challenge no and you, you kind of work your way forward and then there's another door and you think, oh, exit. And it's not the exit, it's deeper in. <laughs> and uh, oh, I, uh, we started 30 years ago with my, I adopted a young baby from Romania and I had no idea when I picked him up and made him a promise um, I said, I'm, I'm coming back, whatever it takes, I'm going to come back and get you. And uh, I was there within a year, I was back and we adopted him in three weeks, which is miraculous by itself. Yes. We wrote a book about it, actually called The Bummer Lamb. And so what happened was that uh, when I adopted him, I felt guilty about all the kids I left behind. So I went back and I totally fixed up that orphanage. And while I'm doing that, my father hears about this place called Moldova that I'd never heard of before in my life. Oh. But the good works in Romania had qualified me for what was next. So I went and I found this orphanage with 200 young girls handicapped. 
And the director said to me, you know, uh, when was the last time you saw a baby freeze to death? And I looked at him, and I, I mean, I got such a sick feeling in my stomach because I knew I had crossed a, th a new threshold. And he said, yeah. this, uh, this was the 11th of December. He says, uh, this year so far, 16 of our kids have frozen to death. Oh, my. And I was, you know, I was on TV preaching household salvation. We were known for singing and yeah. praise ministry. I mean, years, 50 years I've been in America. And suddenly, preaching wasn't important. Singing wasn't important. Being on TV wasn't important. I had to fix this. And, yes. and so when you do something, and, and I, I just feel we're talking to a pastor right now, Michael, that's going through a tremendous, you want to, you want to quit. You want to just go and have a normal life. I got bad news for you, my brother or my sister. There's no such thing as a normal life. Once the mantle, remember when Elijah smote Elisha? Remember that? And he, he slaughtered the oxen and he chased after him. Once the anointing, once the cloak has brushed upon you, you have no, you don't have an option. You're a Jesus thinker. What a great, what a great term. And once you're a Jesus yeah. thinker, you start looking around you for needs to meet. You're looking for water to turn to wine. You're looking for people to be lowered into your world through the roof because that's what Jesus did. <laughs> And you yes, become absolutely. his extension of work. And, and now what we're doing in Moldova is ridiculous. I mean, we are way above what a ministry of our size and income should be doing. And yet, absolutely. I won't quit. And it seems that God's faithful and he seems to have enough money to, to, to keep, let me doing what I'm doing. Because God is in this thing. And yes. I know you can testify. And I, I know folks absolutely. watching it. Would, would love to be a part of your ministry and, and support you as well because of the, the incredible work, work you do. Tell us, how. give us an address so folk can get in contact with you and invest in your ministry. If you're watching today, Michael French Ministries, P.O. Box 14420. You can yes. write this down or take a snapshot of it. I'm, I'm still the old-fashioned guy that writes it out on a piece of paper. I'm embarrassed. And my kids come yes. in and say, why did, you, why did you take a screenshot? And I'm going... What's a screenshot? <laughs> anyway, but you, Michael French Ministries, P.O. Box 14240, Broken Arrow. For all my European friends, you're going to love this name. Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. A great place. I've been there many times. Oh. 74014. Or get in contact with Michael French, and he spells his name with a K, not a C-H. M-I-K-E-L, Michael, French.com. Yes. And I'm going to get in contact with him today and ask him, what can I do to help you in what you're doing in Haiti and, and my, about 200 in other Russia, countries Russia. in the world? It's amazing. Yes, absolutely. You know, how did you get, how you did you get, sta how did you get started at Mission Work? What was the, what was the spark well, that... Th there, there, there's two parts to that story and very simple and very short. Uh, number one, I love to travel. I'm one of those yeah. rare people that I, 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 I love airports, I love travel, I, I love used airplanes. To. Not anymore. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like delays. Now, yeah. anybody who tells you they like delays, I don't <laughs> understand them. Uh, the only reason I like a plane over a car is it's faster. I want to get there. Uh, and so when, when we were, began in the ministry, uh, people like Mark Bentain invited us to come to, the, to India. Well, you know, why would you not do that? Uh, sure. Uh, uh, David Summerall invited me to the Philippines, Lester Summerall to, to Hong Kong, uh, uh, David Seward to Singapore. Uh, wow. That was, it, it was just, it was God. We loved doing it, but we did that like every other year. Uh, then um, in 1988, in October, uh, a friend of mine, which you probably know, his name is Rob Hoskins. Rob called me and he said, there's a door opening in Russia, and uh, my dad and I are getting ready to go to Helsinki and meet with some people, and, uh, and uh, would I be interested in going? And I said, no, I'm not interested in going. Yeah. I, I, I have no desire to go to Russia. It's the evil empire, um, all the things that uh, I grew up. I, I've never understood racism, but growing up being an American kid, grow, climbing under my desk because the Russians were going to invade us, uh, I knew I didn't like those people. I, I didn't hate them, but I knew I didn't like them. 
And I'd never met a Russian. Didn't realize, for those of you who don't know much about Russia, look at my face. I'm Cherokee, I'm, uh, excuse me, I'm Chickasaw Indian, German, and Welsh. And I look more oh like I'm a Russian. <laughs> and when I got off the plane in Russia the first time, people started speaking to me in Russian. You know, it's like <laughs> they, they thought I was Russian. I, I didn't like people who look like me. That doesn't work. 